Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody. Today's show is You Can Heal Your Gut. I am Donna, and I am here to share with you things that have helped me and my family and all the countless people that um, I've helped through the years through my classes and my website and all the wisdom I've gained from understanding how the body works, how microbes work, and what we can do to assist our body to lead a really healthy and wonderful life. Um, and today's show is, a, is all about healing your gut. And um, we have, I have personal experience in that with my daughter, Macy. And healing is a very interesting thing. So many people don't realize that answers are coming to us all the time. We just, we don't often see them, but I... I get this from people in emails and classes. Often what I have found is people are so wise and they actually know what to do on many, uh, on many counts. They just need me to validate it for them because it seems like they, many of them already have the answers. And the answers I needed to help my daughter heal for, from food allergies was really coming to me all the time. I just didn't understand the science behind it yet. But I still found a way to help her heal without even understanding why it was working until it was about a decade later that I really understood what what I was doing and why it was working. And when we we get, you know, answers to our problems, we don't often see or understand what's going on, but we, you know, we really do have access to so much information now that it can often be confusing to people. And so... um, what I have found in my own life is that there are answers specifically designed for me too and for you. And um, when you have food allergies, it's the body's cry for help. It's not the enemy. It's a, a symptom of something greater that's going on. And if you are, are struggling with food allergies, um, I think the answers are coming to you. Or, you know, or for goodness sakes, why are you listening to this broadcast? It's not a coincidence Um, there's answers coming to you all the time. I had someone say one sentence to me, and it helped me find the key to my daughter's healing. And um, it came in response to something that I thought might be a good idea to do, but I just had to act on it and trust that the power that made the body can heal the body and give us what we need. And I've seen so many, many people heal from food allergies And I just want to remind you that I'm just a voice um, on a podcast. And perhaps it it has been sent to help you and to change your life or just to give you some wisdom or some understanding. You're doing the healing, not me. Um, I'm just reminding you that you can heal and that your body is this incredible, magnificent machine that knows how to keep you well. You just have to learn to work with it. And when you do, when you start to understand things and do things, your body gives you feedback. And when something makes you well, you pay attention to that and you keep doing that thing. And that's what happened to me and to my family. Okay, so let's talk about food allergies. They affect over 15 million Americans and including one in every 13 children. And that is very disturbing statistics. And they are pointing out that food allergies are constantly on the rise. And for example, between 1997 and 2011 alone, food allergies in children rose by 50%. And we were one of those families in 2001 um, that had food allergies. It was my daughter, Macy. And she just suddenly began developing food allergies. And it was a devastating thing to me and to her. Every week, it seemed that she found another food that she was allergic to, and it kept getting, her diet kept getting more and more limited, and I just didn't understand what was happening. And, you know, I wanted to know why Macy suddenly, out of the blue, started developing these food allergies that she'd never had a problem before, and it was very severe. It limited her life, her food choices. It made my job hard as a mother because I had to find special foods to feed her. And it was just a warning sign um, that there's something going on that, you know, we weren't really aware of. You know, we weren't understanding what was really happening to Macy. And it was kind of a wake-up call for both of us. And so she she started to eliminate all the foods because she wanted to stop the pain because every time she ate, she had pain in her stomach. So she wanted to start to eliminate all the foods that were bothering her. 
but it just kept getting worse and worse. Every week, she was getting more and more foods that she was allergic to. And she told me she felt like she was living in a prison um, of her own body. And that drove me crazy. And I wanted to know why my daughter had developed these food allergies. And it took me about a decade to figure out why she had them. Now, we healed them very quickly. Um, and even understanding why what I was doing and why it worked so well took me a while to figure that out too. But when I did, it was such a wonderful thing because I was able to help so many other people. And interestingly enough, researchers have found parallels between the rise in food allergies and the increase in antibiotic and antimicrobial usage. And according to British researchers, um, exposure to antibiotics early in life when children are little may increase the child's risk of developing food allergies by 40%. And scientists also clearly showed how um, the genetically engineered foods that we have in our food supply now and the use of the agricultural herbicide called lyphosate, which destroys gut bacteria and it also promotes food allergies. And that's something that is happening all across the country. Um, it's on a lot of our crops, on a lot of our food, and it's devastating to the gut. And I was really excited that in 2014, researchers at New York University Medical Center made some exciting discoveries regarding food allergies and intestinal bacteria. Not only did they discover why children developed food allergies, but they also found a way to solve it. They study which This study, which was published in the Proceeding of the National Academy of Sciences, found that the young children who were given too many antibiotics early on were at a greater risk of developing food allergies, and it was a whopping 60 to 70 percent. The researchers identified naturally occurring bacteria in the human gut that kept people from developing food allergies. And if these bacteria were killed by antibiotics early in life, children became more susceptible to food allergies later on in life. And the scientists tested this theory by feeding antibiotics to young mice, and then later on they went on to do this with children and found they were more likely to develop a peanut sensitivity than the, than the control group, the ones that had been given the antibiotics. And here's the exciting part. When the young mice were given the good bacteria Clostridia, like magic, their food allergies diminished and vanished. And this class called Clostridia is hundreds of members of bacteria. It's a big strain of bacteria. And it diminishes with frequent antibiotic use, at a very, and especially if you're yet a young age. And it makes children very susceptible to food allergies. And so basically, if, if children are receiving a lot of antibiotics, when, especially when you're a child or younger, um, that bacteria diminishes rather quickly because it's being killed by the antibiotics. And I've often heard this, and I remember when I was first raising my kids, I would hear the doctors say, well, a lot of food allergies go away as the kids grow older. Well, it's because they, they get this good bacteria into their guts is what the researchers found. And um, then their food allergies go away because they receive it somewhere through foods or people or somewhere because um, it's such a big strain. It's what allows the body to heal. And Macy had been taking a lot of antibiotics every year, um, several times a year, because she was getting really bad sinus infections. And they weren't really going away permanently. They would help to get an antibiotic for a little while, and the next thing I knew, she had another one. And so she had been receiving a lot of antibiotics. And that's around the time she started to get food allergies. But I think there were some other things going on that I want to talk about later on in this broadcast, because it's not usually just one thing. Um, uh, she had several things going on and I didn't find that out till many years later as well, but it helped me put the pieces together, but it all revolved around bacteria in her gut. And this was, you know, it was in the very early days of understanding the body and the mind and how it works together. And I was really desperate to help Macy and I took her to an acupuncturist to hopefully help her with her sinus infections and I like acupuncture. I think they're great. I think chiropractors are great. I think all of those, they've so, been so helpful to me in my life and with my family. But I'll never forget that day um, when I took her to help her with her sinus infections. I took her to this guy. 
and he was working with her, and he, you know, he was surprised. She was so young, and he looked at her, and he said, Macy, and he was a Chinese um, acupuncturist, and he had a little bit of broken English, and I really loved him. He was a great guy, and he said to Macy, you have too much hurry worry, and your body is displaying that, and he said, you, you're in your head too much. You need to, you know, calm down, not so much worry about things. And I remember sitting there and I bit my lip when he said that. And I felt myself like well up inside. And Macy started to cry because she resonated with what he had said. And she went home that afternoon and she broke up with her boyfriend. (laughs) And it started her on her journey to healing because the stresses of the things she was going through were also affecting her, her body. And that wasn't all of the things that happened to Macy. But what happened was after we started giving her cultured foods, I noticed that she did better when she had a cultured food. And I was talking to someone who I had bought some supplements from, and it was, she was, in my opinion, a health expert. She was, um, I think she was a microbiologist, actually, is what I think she, was, she did for a living. But she had a health website and sold things. And I told her that I noticed um, that Maisie did better when she had a cultured probiotic food. And that lady said one sentence to me, and I was, she was on the phone with me, and she said, well, I would feed her a cultured mood at every meal and see what happens, because I think she's needing it to help her digest her food. And so I did that. I gave Macy a cultured food at every meal, and that was the greatest blessing and greatest advice that I had got for Macy. Um, these cultured foods, when I gave her cultured food at every meal, she digested her food. And what's cool about it is culture foods are pre-digested. So they help you digest the food that you eat with them. And without knowing it, by giving her a probiotic food, and whether it was a glass of kombucha, whether it was a spoonful of cultured vegetables, whether it was kefir, if she just had a little bit of it with her meal, she was able to digest everything and her stomach quit hurting. Now, Macy also had, she was diagnosed with leaky gut. And we took Macy to several doctors. And... um, it was very disheartening because they really didn't know what to do to help her. And finally, the last doctor I went to told me that, you know, maybe we should take out Macy's gallbladder because maybe that's, she's not digesting things and maybe that would help her. And I, when they said that to me, I was like, okay, I'm done. You're thinking of taking out her gallbladder on just, you're not even sure that's what it is. And I know that digestion gets worse when you take out your gallbladder because you have a hard time digesting fats after that. So that's when I figured, oh, I can figure this out better on my own than I can do surgery. So that was the last day I went to a conventional doctor. I figured I've got to find a way to help her. And these are the answers that came to me. And when you have a leaky gut, like Macy had, it means the intestinal lining has become more porous. And there's more holes developing that are larger in size. And the screening out process is no longer functioning properly in the body. So the fallout results of this is large undigested food molecules and other bad stuff, yeast and toxins like candida and all over forms of waste that your body normally doesn't allow to flow freely in your bloodstream starts to leak into your bloodstream. And this can cause a lot of pain in your body and your gut. And it's, and it was making it really miserable for her to eat. And there's something that I want to talk about here. And this is just really more my own personal speculation. But Macy was also, um, during that time, okay, first of all, she had taken a lot of antibiotics. She was having a bad relationship with her boyfriend. But she was also doing something else. She was doing a very, very low-carb diet, very low. And so she wasn't eating a lot of fruits and vegetables. She was mostly eating, you know, proteins and fats. And what happens when you don't feed your microbes, when you go on extremely low ones that where you're not eating any vegetables, and she was eating a little bit, but not very much, your microbes start to starve. And when they start to starve, they could eat the lining of your gut. And it was around that, after, around that time, and she'd been doing it for a while, that I wonder if that didn't affect her as well. Because, um, you know, your microbes have to have something to eat. And they'll eat the lining of your gut if you don't give them lots of fiber because that's how they grow and multiply. Because you have a hundred trillion of these little microbes in your gut, in your body. And uh, 
that I often wonder if that didn't hurt her. I've done I've seen some research by Jeff Leach at the um, American Gut Project, and he talks about this. Um, and it very it, it kind of piqued my interest because that was around the time that Macy had problems, and she'd never had problems before. So was it that? I don't know. I know the antibiotics didn't help her, but she was killing off her microbes left and right through her diet, through antibiotic use, through stress. Um, you know, all kinds of things affect your microbes. And her, her gut was really messed up. And what we did um, was we removed all the foods that were causing her pain. So basically we did, you know, an elimination diet. If she couldn't eat this food because it was bothering her, we wouldn't, she didn't eat that. And um, then she ate a cultured food at every single meal. And she, basically for breakfast, she, she had like, you know, kefir smoothie. And then for lunch and dinner, she had like cultured vegetables or kombucha or both. And both, all these things helped her digest her food. And her gut began to heal. I remember that. Um, and we also gave her something else that I didn't know at the time was helping her. But they were prebiotics. And we gave her this special tea. It was called Faux Joe's. And I don't think the lady sells it anymore. But it was a common, It was a tea. And it had tic- chicory root in it, which is a massive prebiotic. It had dandelion root. That is also one. It had inulin, which is a big, which is a huge prebiotic. And she had carob in it, and I think it was coconut oil, something else. But anyway, it was all in this tea. And I talk about it on my website. Um, I show you, uh, diff- I, you can type in um, tea, and it'll come up. that will show you which kinds of tea I drank, and anything with chicory root. And they've got several of these on the market now. Um, I think there's a one, it's, it's a coffee alternative, and it's called Tequino, and I think that is very similar to what we gave her. And um, she had that a lot. And we didn't know that they were, it was a, not only was it a prebiotic tea, it was a huge prebiotic tea. And um, I think that had a lot in her healing because it helped her microbes grow and multiply. So the ones that were gone, we replenished with the, cult, with the cultured foods, with the probiotic foods, and then we fed them with a prebiotic foods tea, this special tea and prebiotics. And also she started adding a lot of fruits and vegetables to her diet, and um, she started to heal. And within a month, she stopped hurting. Her stomach stopped hurting every time she ate, because that had been happening. And within three months, her so-called food allergy started to evaporate, one by one. And it took about a year for her to complete this cycle, but after about a year, uh, Macy could eat just about anything. It was, it was an amazing thing. Everything that she had been allergic to, she no longer was allergic to. Um, She didn't have any uh, pain in her gut anymore. Her sinuses cleared. And I believe it was all due to the cultured foods and the prebiotics that we were feeding her. And also the, you know, the stress that we had eliminated from her life. But to tell you exactly what we did, she had a cup of kefir and it was a smoothie or in some way kefir every single morning for breakfast. That was her main thing she had for breakfast. And she usually made it into like, she put frozen fruit in it or regular fruit. And um, she had that almost every morning. And then for lunch, she had a lot of bone broth. She had a lot of soups. She would also um, only eat sprouted bread or, or sourdough bread. That was the only, because she couldn't handle wheat in, in any shape, way or form. But she could handle sprouted and sourdough. And she did the best on sourdough. Um, so she she did have that, and she would have a spoonful of cultured vegetables with it. And uh, one of the things that she did is, this is one of our favorite sandwiches. She would make a sandwich, and she would make like a grilled cheese, and she would put cultured vegetables in the middle of the sandwich, and she would grill it on each side. And it stayed cool enough in the center that it didn't kill the probiotics. But she had that a lot, and she did that. And then she would have a side of cultured veggies, like a spoonful. And she almost, I think it most... Dinner and lunch, she had kombucha, which was four to eight ounces, sometimes more. And uh, she did a lot of coconut kefir, which is coconut water kefir, which um, is made from coconut water. And I love that. Uh, It's a probiotic drink, and it's very soothing to the gut lining. And Macy had a lot of coconut oil, too. I remember she ate spoonfuls of coconut oil because it gave her energy. And um, the interesting thing about coconut oil is it's antifungal. It's antibacterial, it's anti, um, 
uh, viral. So it, I think it killed a lot of her candida. I think she had some candida issues because whenever you take a lot of antibiotics, you make a lot of room for candida to grow and multiply because the bacteria has died off in the gut. So there's all this extra room so candida can spread and grow. And I think she had quite a few candida issues then. And one of the things that really helped her was coconut oil. That was something she did. And she would get a burst of energy. And it's, it's interesting. It's a medium-chain fatty acid, coconut oil is. So it burns more like a carbohydrate than it does compared to other fats. So it burns first in the body. And she would always get a burst of energy whenever she had some. And um, there's been a lot of study things that have said it helps the thyroid. And it, it was something that really helped her a lot. She got in a lot of incredible amount of benefit from um, having coconut oil in her diet. And all the other thing that we did was that we added tons of prebiotics in the form of tea. And if you're looking for that tea, uh, dandelion root, chicory root, and inulin were the ingredients that were all prebiotic in that tea. And there's one called um, Vojos, but I think that's off the market now. I don't think she makes that anymore, and it was from Coventry Farms. But there's another one that's very similar to that. It was called Takino Tea, and you can get that on Amazon. You can go on my website. I think I've got a link to Amazon on there. And then she also ate a lot of fruits and veggies, too. She had the you know cultured vegetables, but she also had fruits in her in her morning smoothies, and it made such a difference in her life, and her allergies vanished. And what was interesting, um, one of the very first people that I ever told um, about cultured foods, I, I was going to keep it to myself when I first learned about these foods, because people thought I was crazy fermenting foods on my counter, and but they had made me well. And so I knew that they were essential to my well-being. So I didn't really care what people thought, but I didn't really necessarily want to get beat up by people, which kind of happened in the beginning. But one day I was at a class, and my daughter was taking a dance class. And two of my friends, we were all eating lunch together, and um, her little girl was sitting there. She had sores all over her mouth, and she had so many food allergies. And my other friend's little boy was coughing so bad, I thought he was going to lose a lung because he had really bad asthma. And I just, I couldn't stand to see this kid str- you know, struggle and suffer so much. And I thought that these foods would help him. So I broke down and told them about him. And it was such a wonderful journey to watch this little girl heal from food allergies and then to watch that little boy not need his asthma inhaler anymore because Kiefer is so effective for those lungs. It works so very well on asthma. I've seen so many people get off their inhalers um, by drinking kefir. And it was her, the other little girl's food allergies were disappeared. And it was just such a wonderful thing to see. And it really, I did, at the time, I didn't know why cultured food works. I just knew that they did. And it really wasn't until a decade later that I understood why. Well, now there's so many different people doing research on this. They just did another study in Australia where they found that, you know, Replacing the bacteria that's missing in the guts of these people that have food allergies makes the food allergies vanish. And they've done studies on people. They've done studies on um, all different types of, you know, people who have done antibiotic use. And they've all kind of come up with the same thing. And as, you know, that's the thing that's increased a lot is the use of antibiotics. As we've seen, food allergies are just rampant. It's just absolutely crazy. And I just, it's so interesting to me because... I mean, we're taking out so many food groups out of our life that I'm surprised we can find anything to eat. I mean, one minute it's good, one minute it's bad. I mean, it's just crazy. And our bodies are so intelligent. They really want to help us. Um, they only ingest, when anything you ingest, the body tries to assimilate. Even if it's a harmful substance, many times people don't understand that when the, the body's always trying to help us. So it will, you know, it's being fed something that's not good for it. And sometimes you'll get cravings because uh, your body will try to assimilate that food and cause you to crave it so that it can work on, you know, uh, work on breaking it down and digesting it and trying to figure out how to make it usable for you because that's what your body does. That's, that's, that's the wisdom of the body is it's always taking what you're giving it and trying to make the best of it. But what if we can just turn the table and work with our bodies in a spectacular way. Maybe stop the overuse of antibiotics. And for the record, I'm not against antibiotics. I think they're very necessary sometimes, but I think we overuse them. 
I also think that that our bodies have the ability to fight these pathogens and viruses with the help of our good bacteria, but because it's been diminished so much, whether it's been, you know, antibacterial soaps or antibiotic use or too much sugar and processed foods in the diet will also kill your microbes and uh, allow your gut to be distressed, or even just stress in general. Um, all of these things can diminish the 100 trillion microbes that are placed inside of you and all around you that keep you well each and every day. So my job is to teach you about it, to help you, or really just to share it with you because it's made all the difference in my life. And uh, I've, I've been doing it for 18 years, I think, because it works. It was the only thing that worked for me. And it's easy, and I just... I don't eat cultured foods all day long. I just add them to my diet and it's easy and it's fun and it's delicious. And that's why I have, I think I have like 300 recipes on my website at culturedfoodlife.com and I have them in my three books and I just keep coming up with them because my family was picky and uh, they made me really strive to teach them how to eat these foods and to help them. And guys, it's made such a difference for me. So I hope that helps you. If you're struggling with food allergies, you know, I think the best thing in the world was for you to try to add a cultured food when you eat or to add them to your children's diet that are struggling and see how it helps them. You know, listen to your body, see if it it makes it easier and and watch the healing begin. It's it's a very fun journey, you know. It, It didn't take very long. It took about three weeks for Macy to really see a significant difference, but it did take a year for her to really get rid of all of her food allergies. But by three months, it was pretty amazing that she had uh, really turned the corner and was able to eat so many foods that she had once been allergic to. And it was just thrilling to see. And not only did it teach me, it taught her uh, how miraculous her body is and how she can take care of it. And she's carried that. Now she's in her 30s and she was 15 or 16 at the time. And she never forgot it. It The body is the best teacher of them all. It can teach you so much about, you know, how to stay well. So we just have to gain the wisdom and the knowledge, and then we can do it more and do it with more intention. And then uh, everything works better. So that is my show for this week. Um, I hope it helps you. Uh, sending you uh, lots of hope and hugs from me because I know what it's like to go through something like this. And... Uh, Don't ever give up. Always have hope because the body is an amazing vessel and it's always working to heal you. You just got to understand how it works. Have a great week, guys.